Hey guys, Engine Doc back with you again. Got another engine to look at here. Got a little John Deere, one and a half horse, Model E. And uh, this engine came to me uh, for a repair. Good friend of mine owns it. And they've had it in the family for many, 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 many years. And they decided they wanted to, they knew it needed a fuel tank. So they brought it to me to have a fuel tank for me to put a fuel tank in it for them. So that's what we're going to do. But I got it apart. <laughs> it definitely needs a fuel tank and no doubt about that. Uh, I've done some cleaning on it. This was all full of rat's nest, mouse nest down in here. I've, I've, I started on the engine. I wasn't going to do a video on it. And once I found what I did, I thought, well, this will be a good, another good subject. To look at here so anyway they uh, they brought it to me with a new a new tank and uh, I uh, pulled it apart started to put the new tank in it and found some issues we'll take a look at those here here's the igniter side the igniter looks real good I have uncovered there was uh, oh a half inch at least of, of solid grease on this thing which is really the way to find them because if you can look if you can tell from your vantage point there's a lot of original paint on this thing but uh, we may compromise that with this repair um, they weren't sure of the magneto uh, I actually had the engine run on uh, on the starting fluid just a shot in the carburetor throat there and uh, cranked it over and it uh, fired right up so our magneto is good igniter's good we just thought we were going to have to put a pump or a fuel tank in it and uh, but we found more we found a, a crack under here in the water jacket which i'll show you i'm going to have to get it apart and also found an issue with the uh, with the camshaft let me show you that so i've already got the bolts out of the cover here we're going to pull this cover off take a look at it here get this out of the way take a look down in here let me reposition you okay the problem we have is the cam gear right here let me roll this engine around to where the crank throw comes up here and it is actually able to touch. I don't know if you can see how much play that has. Uh, you probably can't. Let me get in here like this. There you go. And this will actually roll around. Let me take it around again here. Let me go. Well, I'm going backwards. That's okay. I'll bring it around here again. There we are. This uh, cam gear you can see how loose it is like that it's actually coming in contact with the crankshaft here uh been running like this obviously i had it running um but while we're in here we're going to take a look the engine's got to completely come apart anyway so we're going to take a look at uh, see if that's got a bushing see if it needs a bushing or whatever so the first plan of attack is going to be getting the crankshaft out of it. I'm going to take the rod loose and uh, take the mains out here and lift the crankshaft and flywheels as an assembly out of it. And then we can get down in here and, and see what else is going on in here. But uh, this has all got to be stripped down anyway in order to have the block welded. And uh, we'll uh, show you that here in a little bit. So there are uh, marks on the gears. I've confirmed that so we can get everything lined back up again. There's a trick on these mags I'll show you later too to get them lined up. There are two pole magneto in here. There's two windings. So that means with every revolution there are two actual power pulses where the voltage actually comes up. And that's where you want to time these things at. So we'll get into that later. Um, looks like maybe somebody's had this rod off before. I see a dot on the rod, but I don't see one on the cap. Looks like it might be on upside down. 
That happened a lot. I am going to mark the mains, although I don't think I can get them mixed up, but we're going to make sure. And just kind of mark things as we break, take it apart and go from there and uh, see what it looks like deeper inside. cap off here. There's shims in here we want to watch. It's trying to come apart. Trying to get it slipped off the threads. shell come loose in it too. There's the bearing shell. Let me turn it over and see if there's a dot there. Yep, there's the dot. Yeah, if you can see it right there, there's a matching dot on the rod and I'll be turning that back over and assembling that correctly. So let's go ahead and Put this right back together. These bearing shells are replaceable too. So I'm going to slip this back together here. So we don't lose any shims or any other parts. Put the nuts back on it. I probably could go ahead and pull the piston out, but I'm not going to do that just yet. I'm going to lay it down here. And we're going to work on getting the crankshaft out of it next. So let me get a socket for that. tight. That one wasn't very tight. None of them were very tight. Get the bolts out of it. Plenty of, plenty of original grease. See if those caps will come loose. That one is. There's one. Bearings look pretty good in it so far. So I'm gonna get the other one loose here. that one. Lay it over here. Now I'm ready to lift that crank out of there. Crank and flywheel assembly. Let me move a few things here out of the way. And let's get that out of there. bearing halves come out. Here's the bearings. This one goes on this side. 
This one goes on this side. That'll all have to be reshimmed anyway. Here's your shims. Right here. Of course, they'll all have to be cleaned up, degreased. There's thin ones in here too, thin brass shims. So I'll completely reshim the engine and clean it and go from there. Well, we'll get the side cover off here now. Here's your serial number. I looked that up uh, on the web and it's a 1934 was the year it was made. They made 5,040 of them or something like that maybe. Um, I have to double check that but they made a lot of these engines. John Deere did. Get all my screws out here. We'll probably get a gasket kit for this. You can buy a gasket kit pretty cheap. And here's the hit and miss mechanism. The latch out mechanism. So I will have to get that apart. Get that taken out. I'm going to get the head off of it probably next. All right, we're going to get this arm out of here. This actuates the igniter. Cotter pin. Pin. This is the push rod, and that's actually bent a little bit right there. We'll take a little closer look at that on reassembly and see if we need to address anything there straightening that up or whatever this is on a spring here that keeps the tension on this mechanism back here kind of let that lay there got a piece of house wiring on here for magneto wire <laughs> we'll change that and this this deal in here let's let's take a look i know this will come out this piece that actually actuates this rod we'll get him out of there throw him over to the side gonna go in here and see what see what's going on with this cam bushing bearing i don't know i don't know what it is take a look here let me go get a rent if i remember right there's a plug under here that you take out that will let a shaft out and I may have to push down on it from, I'm reaching around inside and pushing down on it there yeah it's coming out there it comes let's pull it out of there the engine over a little bit where I can get that out of there there it is that comes out and then this piece here comes out there's a spring on it right here this is your speed controller knob right here so we'll get that out of there like so I'll lay those over to the side now I can see the cam I reach around back here yeah, it looks like a bushing in there. So I'll be able to get the nut off. There's a nut over there that holds the gear on. And uh, I'll be able to get that off. This is the governor. And that's about as far as we're going to go right there for right now. Uh, might as well get the, the magneto off of it. Let me get this piece of house wire off of here and I'll be back. Tell you what, this is a like a what a number 14 maybe piece of solid copper house wire. <laughs> uh, use what you got right back on the farm. You know, don't you don't want to go to a hardware store just for a little piece of wire. You strip out what you got and use it. Uh, this uh, end of this mag I just noticed is cracked 
corner of it's broke off right here. A um, little cracking going on there. These are replaceable, but I'm not going to replace it unless we have to. No use to. It was working. I had it running. So we're going to try to not do a whole lot to that mag just yet. Mag's bolted on from underneath here. This is another weak part of the magnetos, is this pot metal base. So anytime you can avoid taking this apart, try to avoid taking the mag off, we're going to have to heat up the whole block on this in order to, to weld it, to braze it. So we don't want to do that with the mag on there. So I'll take this off, take these little bolts out here. This mag got to come off of there. I've seen worse. I'm going to stick those bolts right back in there. The short one and the long one. And I'll lay it off to the side. Some kind of a bug nest there. Now we'll get the head off. Let's see, a couple wrenches here. This bolt goes through this rocker. And uh, uh, it should just unscrew without even hurting the Gitz oiler that's on top of there. Now this will unscrew out of here. come off of there just like that. I'm going to put that nut right back on there. That'll keep that rocker arm assembly. Now I can get a straight shot in here at the uh, at the head nuts. Get these popped loose. If I take the igniter off, which I probably will, to clean it, I'll take it off after I get the head off. There's some tomfoolery going on here with this exhaust valve spring. We may want to pick up a couple springs for it too. This intake spring's been around the world a couple of times, it looks like. Now's the time. No more than these parts cost. Um, Now's the time to put new parts on it, put it up in good condition, make it look nice, make it look like you care. I was just going to throw a tank in it real quick and get it back to them, but okay, here's the head. Somebody's made a makeshift <laughs> out of a piece of bandsaw blade or a hacksaw blade, it looks like. Um, choke plate there. You can I can look in there and see the points for the igniter. That needs to all be cleaned up too. We'll take that igniter off of there too before we go back together with it. And there is the cylinder. Let's have a look at it here. It had a little blow by. Let me shove the piston out of here, maybe. It had a little blow by. Uh, you know, which a little blow by doesn't hurt anything. The rings don't look too bad. At least they're all there. I've taken these apart before, didn't have any, or they were broken. So that looks pretty decent. The wrist pin. 
was a little little tiny bit loose but I probably won't do anything with it I'll let you know on that taking a look at the cylinder I've definitely seen worse probably if I put rings in I'll probably break the glaze and that'll be about it use a little ball hone on it I'll probably probably do it but uh, that scutter stripped down. Let me get it turned upside down here now. I'll show you the crack. Before we turn it upside down, let's look at this cam. I want to show you what's going on in here anyway. This cam runs the governor. You can see the fly weights down there. And uh, let me get a screwdriver. I can come down here. Fly weights. This little deal here you see uh, is the oil slinger. And uh, of course, it keeps things splash oiled in there. And let me show you the oil pan here. Here's the oil pan that goes between the crank case and the fuel tank. And this is kind of rusty. So I had some leftover uh, tank sealer. So I painted the bottom side of this. This will go to the gasoline side and uh, painted the bottom side of it so it'll it goes like, like this to separate the oil from the gasoline. So uh, this sits down in here like, let me see, like this right here. This little deal here has got a screen on it there and it stays full of oil. And that slinger works in here and slings oil in here. And that's what, uh, what lubes the engine. So. It's got a little crack in it right there, I see, but it's probably been in there since day one. But anyway, this lets in just a little bit of oil in here and keeps it slinging and keeps the inside of the engine lubricated pretty well. So we've got a nut here. Hopefully that'll come loose. Let me get a wrench. That's an inch and a quarter. Now I'm gonna have to hold that somehow. I've got a socket here. I think I'll go right in there and I think, with any luck, I can get this broke loose without breaking it. It wasn't very tight. There we go. Good deal. the nut and lock washer and yeah it's gonna come right off there's, a, there's the gear goes with the hub side toward the crankshaft remember that it's got a woodruff key which is well worn keyway's not bad but that woodruff key is worn pretty bad and there's the cam now this part's probably hardened i know the cam itself is but i think the shaft is i still see the original machining marks on that shaft i don't know if you can see it or not but they're on there and this looks like a bushing let me uh, wipe that loose in there I believe that that is a bushing and I'll bet you that I can get that I'll bet somebody makes that if they don't I will I'll bet I can push that bushing out of there and we'll be able to rebush that get our cam back in specs to where it's not wobbling around in there we'll be good to go well, let's move a few things here and get this uh, block turned upside down. Roll it over here. Get my wooden box out of the way. Let me hand hold you and we'll take a look at this crack. Well, we've got quite a little bit of few parts laying out here. A lot of stuff to get cleaned up now. 
So, uh, crank looks pretty good, really. Here's the crack. Um, starts through here, goes through this plug hole down this way. And over on the other side, it's cracked down here, too. I don't know if you can see that very well or not, but this is going to have to all be brazed up and probably retapped. Shouldn't be a big deal. Probably even though even though he's brazing this, he might even be able to put a oh uh, like a pipe sleeve in there, braze it in, and just put a cap on it. Different ways of doing it. This uh, governor bushing is made the same way that the cam bearing is made bushing so may just put them both in and uh, I'll see what the avail availability of those parts are we'll go from there but now they can take the block they've got a guy that is good at welding brazing repairing cracks they'll have that done it'll be as good as new we'll get some new parts in it put it back together and bring you back show you what we ended up with so get on to fixing the block